So today's guest is Erica D. James, who helps leaders fiercely build something extraordinary. She is a master transformation specialist who discovered her gifts of speaking and leading at the age of 12 and has spent more than 31 years guiding people to become all they were meant and born to be. So Erica, thank you very much for being on the show. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing amazingly. I'm so glad to be here and just get to indulge in the work that you do. That's so awesome. So thank I'm you. super excited to have you here, especially given our pre-recording chat. We align on a lot of different things, especially, you know, coaches walking their own talk and, and, and receiving and being on the receiving end of this. I'm super excited to dive div, uh, deep into this episode with you. And what I'd love to start off with is just like, you have a very interesting bio like it's short but to the point but also very poignant right like it's i've started entrepreneurship at like 12 years and then i've been doing this transformation work for a long time so i love for you to give us context and, and details for that oh so i have been a business owner for over 31 years i started my first business when i was 18 and uh the, my 18th birthday went and got a business gotten got my business license at the secretary of state and then uh, went off to college and always did training and facilitation. And my whole thing was I'm working to get to a place where I can live the life of my dreams. Let's bring as many people along as I can on that. And of course that delves you deeper into what are the real issues and out of that developing curriculums and trainings and courses. And I did a lot of the early days of my business as a single mom. And so I was an early adopter of, of courses before, like Zoom is magical to me, you know what I mean? Cause I was just on teleclasses and would always go, why can't someone create a technology that we can see each other? And so um, yeah, build, been building courses and my whole thing started off to be around fearlessness. I used to do corporate stuff and then get, got called in. I'm really uh, fascinated with the whole God piece of who was I created to be and what would it take to become that person in the earth? I mean, leave nothing on the table. And so they got called into ministry and now those two worlds absolutely dance with each other. And so I work with particularly high level Christian business uh, women and men to help them get clear about, they're usually clear about what they're called to do or what they want to do, but help them break through the, the and move into fearlessness and clarity and understand who they were created to be and really help them close the gap. And so that I, you know, the, the two have been dancing together really fabulously probably for the last five years of this journey where every year I'm refining streamlining okay this this is the genius zone and now I'm now I'm finally in it and I'm so excited and just wrapping everything around that is where I'm at right now but yeah just I love working with people and seeing them shine and really helping facilitate that in any way I can love it um and especially for me just hearing that like one of the things that I heard most about is like okay so it's like 31 years of business right we're like going through all of these things being an OG and like so many you know like oh, I wish I had zoom before like zoom was a thing right and like the sentiment that stood out for me was it's like the, the the walking my own talk but also doing it for the people that I find my own purpose with, especially to say, like, I've now found it after 31 years. Cause I know so often, you know, more obviously like early stage entrepreneurship, but it's like, Oh my God, like I haven't found my purpose yet. It's like, you've just gotten your feet wet, even if you're like five, 10 years into it. Right. It was so refreshing to kind of hear that piece of like, now I'm living my purpose. Now the compound effect of everything that I've done is here and it's present. That's just what came out for me. So I'd love for you to comment or, or share anything to that. Oh yeah, it's true. You know, because I figured out years ago, I know how to be, book speaking engagements. I know how to do, I could, I could go into corporations. I could do all that, but my assignment is to trailblaze for others. That's what's taken so long. You know what I mean? Creating the systems and the tools and the processes and the platforms that others need to bring through. And then like yourself, creating the structure so they can see where they are and have the breakthroughs they need to uh, do to move forward. That's, that's what the 31 years has been about. And in that, you know, part of it, I did go into the corporate world because I was a single mom. I'm like, woo, I just need a paycheck and some benefits, you know? And <laughs> I was like, no, I am an entrepreneur all the way. So there's quite a journey in that time. And then, as you know, the, the work is not the skills of business because we have more information about how to build businesses than we ever have. 
and people are more stuck than ever because the work is the inner work. So that's, you know, that's that process with you and body and there is no more fear and there is no more stuff. And it doesn't mean you still don't have levels to move to, but that's, yeah, that's been the process. And I think most people quit because they quit when it gets hard. They quit when it doesn't get traction. They quit when they're outputting and your fruit that you're producing is smaller than you thought. And most people don't stick to it. And so I just refuse to quit because I have a vision and I'm like, oh no, we're going to do this thing. So, and I, you know, and my daughter's grown now, so I really can soar. And so this is the time to really be unstoppable. Love it. Well, I mean, there's no better segue than that to dive into. Okay. So you have this wealth of experience. You, you, you have this deep presence of what you're here to do and and what you're on earth to, to share and create. So what is happening in your business right now that you're finding challenging? So my biggest frustration is I create these amazing courses and then I haven't had the marketing bandwidth either with the team member that I have been trying or with myself to get it out to the people it needs. So it's like I've been building this. I mean, I literally have a treasure trove vault. I have created over 400 courses and trainings, but it's now and I should say it's now time to get it out in the world and uh, just moving past whatever that you know, that is to create the time to do what I need, what I know to do and not sabotage. And so that's, what's up for me right now. And then the other thing is really um, just got to the point where I feel like the technology is what I've always envisioned to be able to do what I want to do, to have a, you know, private communities and do the things I want to do. The technology is here too. So, um, but yeah, that's the big thing. I got all the content and really getting it out in the world in a big way. So there's kind of that that sense of like being, you know, like the diamond in the rough, right? Like people, like it's the best kept secret that- I was gonna say the best aren't. kept secret. Yeah. People are like, oh my gosh. And the people that I work with, I mean, they, they are scaling and breaking. I mean, the results are crazy. I've been in the laboratory working with people and now it's like, it's time to put that out in the world. And, but yeah, being that best kept secret. And I just think one of the worst feelings, like you can do the courses and do all that, but if you don't get it in the hands of the people who need it, that disappointment. And so that space, it, it cannot be in my world anymore. Got it. So in that case, um, given that you're a coach and, and you coach in this area, what would you say to coach yourself? That's a good question. Uh, what would I say to coach myself? Um, well, the first question I would probably ask is, what are you afraid of? I just went through that. Was it like, what are we afraid? What am I afraid of? Yeah. So great. What, what are am you I afraid of? of? <laughs> uh, what's my hesitancy? So what has been fascinating? I've done a lot of work around this, but uh, literally to this day, once people discover the work, I get this fe- not feeling they actually begin to stock. Like, it's like you know, like, Literally, I was at church yesterday and I could not walk two steps without somebody blocking, stopping, moving. And it's exactly what I know I'm called to, but there's still a part of me that is like, I know they don't really want what's in me. They really want what I've been through or or the course or the Holy Spirit inside me, but really feeling safe in putting the work out to the masses in a way that I'm a very introverted person. I love my quiet time. I love my, you know, that time. And I feel like there's that juxtaposition where it's not quite safe. I haven't, I don't quite believe it's safe to put my work out the way I need to or the way I, I, I really desire to. Got it. Cause I'm well, telling you people get crazy. I've had people go like, can I just move in with you and just serve you for the next year? Like, no, you cannot. Like, it's not, it's weird. Like it gets really, people stalk me. They, and they say things like, I just can't get enough of you. Like it's like, they say these things, like, this is not normal. You know, like just, you know, and, and um, yeah. And I know it's just begun. And I just put a show out in the world that escalated. So that piece, I can feel it right here. Whoo, that piece of feeling like, um, and in the spirit realm, it feels like, like in the intuitive it feels like I'm being clawed at. Like I want what's in you. I want what's in you. So there's a very like invasive energy to it. It it feels like that. Like and, and it and it and it, yeah. And I'm, yeah. Like yesterday, I'll just give you this example. At church, 
supposed to be um, at a table to really deal with all these people. And there's lines of people wanting to be prayed for because they're getting the result. They're having the breakthrough. They're doing that. And I'm like, okay, I, I want to go pray with the people, but I can't get to the door to get to the, it's profound. And it happens all the time. And it's just like the tip of the iceberg, the small little community who knows what's in me. And so, yeah, there's, there's, there's some fear I'm carrying about putting it out there. And people, I'm telling you, they're, they're kind of extreme responses. Got it. Okay. So I'd love to unpack that a little bit more if you yeah. are good with that. Okay. I'm ready to, yeah, let's do it. So there's this invasive energy that you're talking about as far as like the people that seem to be attracted to you or like that your light seems to bring in. And the way that you were describing it, what I was hearing, there's almost like a vampire type of Ooh. relationship too. That's right? what it feels like. Yeah. It's like I'm attracting leeches. And I mean this respect, like I'm, I don't obviously right, know right, the right. people, but I'm, I'm saying like energetically, it's like these people lack something. So they latch on to me in the hopes that, you know, my energy will bring them to where they need to be. So I just want to clear it up. Like, does that feel accurate with regards to like what yeah, your experience is? Yeah. Okay. Which is why I did the courses to give them what they want, but I haven't put them out there like they need. So they keep, you know, latching. But anyway, but absolutely. That's it. I hadn't put it that way, but that's really true. Okay. So in that case, and again, we'll dive deep into it. But I just want to draw one point just to make sure that I'm hearing you correctly. It's like, this is happening now when I am quote unquote small or manageable if I begin to expand towards the bigness of what I know I'm capable of and the vision that I see, like take these few instances of leeches and now multiply them out, like I'm going to disappear because everybody's going to take my energy. So does that resonate with you? It does. Okay. So it does. is it kind of logical then to assume that like a lot of the fear is I, I don't want to handle this in small doses. I would hate my life if I didn't handle it in big doses. True. Okay. Because I'm built for the big stuff. I know that I'm built for the deep. I'm built for the masses. Perfect. Yeah. So where else in your life have people leached off of your energy? So definitely in the, in the process of raising my daughter as a single mom, and she was a child that I used to say, God, I swear she could connect herself to me, she would. So she was a very needy child like that. And, um, and also uh, in the area of marriage, that has been that case too, where I'm somebody's, you know, I call it being the ministry, but I'm being like more than just the encourager. They're actually pulling something off me. And so that's true. We just hit our eighth year of marriage because I was 44 when I got married. And it just, it just stopped because he's owning his own stuff now. Um, and so that's been the experience inside my house for 26 years. Got it. Okay. So there's your daughter who not only has a biological need to connect with you deeply and to kind of be dependent on you, but there's times that you experience it as this is going beyond that. Like there's just like a neediness there. And then to the life partner that I also have, who has that same pattern, but is like moving out of it. So that to you has like that same kind of taste to it as like the business and marketing equivalent in terms yeah, it of- It feels suffocating to me. And like, um, like I watch a lot of specials with, you know, documentaries with people who have celebrity and they all say the same thing. People want a piece of you. And that's how it's felt inside. So then where's my safe place? If I don't have that inside and now I'm supposed to put this out in the world, more um yeah not having that safe that safe place to or really giving myself permission to do that and not yet believing it can be safe but absolutely Got and they're it. both i will add for this like i've been aware of this and they're both doing well and this is the first time in my life that they are the last 26 years that they're sourcing their own stuff i've done the businesses and everything with that energy inside my house and outside and so um yeah. So this is that breakthrough time because they're good. They're both good. And I don't, that's not there anymore. So. Beautiful. And that's a beautiful spot to be in. And that's something to celebrate. And, and I know I'm using, you know, harsh language to describe these things, but it's just for the sake of like really drawing. It's, the, it's, the breath, it's, it's yeah. a breath of fresh air to me. 
So yeah, Beautiful. don't soften it. I love the, I love directness. Beautiful. So in that case, my follow-up question then is how would you have to continue showing up to enable this to happen? Oh, come on now. Well, it's about allowing that, allowing, how would I have to continue? How, how am I being that's continuing to have to show up? Because this has been an ongoing problem for years, right? Like this is not something that just happened today. So oh, and, oh, and truthfully, ever since I've been a student leader and an athlete, probably from the age of probably really consciously about 10, yeah, so definitely, definitely, definitely. And I'm 51 now. So we're talking about a 40 year, 41 year process. Um, ask me that question again. So the question was, how do you have to keep showing up in order to enable these situations to continue to recur? Well, how do I have to keep showing up? What I'm going to is like feedback I get that, oh, Erica, you're, you're so strong. You're, you know, um, I love being around you. Uh, and I don't quite know how to, I'm exploring how to answer that. Um, because I wanna live in the overflow to have more than enough. And if people are, if I'm perceiving it as people kind of taking, vampiring me, that's, that means my, I have to show up and keep willing to be depleted. I have to show up and keep willing to uh, put myself last after the business, after everybody has what they need. So I have to, I have to be willing to appear like that's okay. So you can just like come and, you know, Come and suck the life out of me. There's more than, you know, I'll be good. Like, like I, like I don't need people or like, I don't, um, so my husband will tell me, he says, you're like, you don't, you're not a robot. And I'm thinking, I don't perceive myself as a robot, but he must. And so perceiving, you know, however I'm showing up, that seems robotic or, um, you know, taking off the superwoman cape. So people stop treating me like I'm a superhero. And I don't mean that, you know what I mean? Like if they just always assume I'm okay, so there's more to take. And so I'm, that means that I'm showing up like I'm okay, there's more to take. And how are you showing up like this at 10 years old? Hmm. Always being the one to keep people encouraged, empowered, uh, to, I could always feel what people felt. I never wanted to have people feel like the outcast that, that I felt or the bullying that I felt. So I always went out of my way to make sure people felt good. They knew they were okay, they could do this. So I was the one even at age 10, you know, writing out the cheers on the soccer teams or the t or the baseball teams, just to make sure like we could create an environment where people felt like they could win. I was literally on a team called the winners. And so, you know, like we were winners, we could do this. And I was the one that led the cheers that, you know, that really did help people have that foundation. So, and we were kind of like the bad news bears. We were a band of misfits and we won. And so like, you know, having people believe they, they could be champions because I could, I've always had that ability to be able to bring that forth in people, um, but, it, but not doing it in a way that feeds me, I guess. Um, what are you hearing? Because I'm I'm not nailing it yet. So I'm okay. open. I, I think you're actually doing a very good job. So okay. if you were to tune back into not adult Erica, but mm. 10 year old Erica, if mm. little Erica didn't show up in a way to make sure everybody was okay, then fill in the blank. Mm. I'm just gonna say the first thing that comes to mind is then we would lose. Cause it was always in athletics at that time. Then we'll lose, we won't win. Um, so if I, and I'm using I now as yeah. like yeah. botting you. So if I, 
as 10 year old Erica don't show up burdening and taking on the responsibility of essentially the adults around me to hold the space for the team, make space for the emotions of the team. I'm assuming also manage the emotions and the burdens of the adults around you. If I don't do all of that, not only do I not have a place, but we collectively lose. Yeah. I mean, literally, I was in the lineup in the place that the bases would be loaded. And my responsibility was to hit the grand slam to bring everybody home. So you have carried a lot of value out mm. of holding everything and everybody's stuff Ooh. since you were a child. Yes. And saw my parents do the same thing. Right. And you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but the way I'm interpreting that is like there, there's an element of like service and service is defined by me last, everybody else first. That's what makes us valuable. Is that accurate or am I missing something there? Well, what how it runs in my head isn't so much me last, everybody else value, valuable. It's you do whatever it takes. And if it means sacrifice, self-sacrifice, that's fine too. Okay. You do whatever it takes. So self-sacrifice yeah. over and above me filling my own cup first so that I could give from a place of fullness, it's sacrifice, not even compromise, but sacrifice me for the sake of the collective good. That is Ooh. the way that I get ahead. That's good. That's and it. be loved. Yeah. I got to write that down. Okay. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> sacrifice me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's right. what, if that all resonates, what I would invite you to go through now, if you're open to it, yeah. is to connect to little Erica mm -hmm. and ask her, is this how she wants to live life? And if not, what does she need? So, um, no, this is not how she wants to live life. And she wants to feel free. I want to just run around and do what I want to do and feel this sense of freedom, not like I have a responsibility for other people's stuff. And it's always collective people, but yeah, I want to feel free. I want to have more than enough um, instead of not enough for me. So whether that's time or whether that's sleep or whether that's sitting on the beach until I'm done, like just feeling, being able to do something until I'm done, just having what I call the more than enough. And just having a sense of freedom instead of feeling bound. So I think that's beautifully articulated at what little Erica wants. Mm -hmm. What does she actually need? Mm -hmm. In the moment that she's taking on all of these responsibilities, sacrificing her own freedom and wants for the sake of the collective, yeah. what does she need in that moment? Um, rest comes up. Um, uh, what's coming also what's coming up is to be seen which is interesting haven't felt that before but to be seen okay what does she want to be seen for she wants to be seen for and by um, as someone who actually needs some that needs support too and is it scary to ask for support when she's been brought up to self-sacrifice as a default? Uh, it does not feel scary, but there is hesitation. What is that? Well, believing that the people that I've supported can support me. Um, or how about this? It's not about the people. It's that I'm supportable. How about that? You know, I mean, that I can receive support. I'm supportable. That I'm worthy of support. Mm, that's good. That as a 10-year-old girl, mm. I don't have to shoulder adult responsibilities while all I really want to do 
is run around, play, and enjoy. Realistically, you could argue have a childhood. Yeah. So what comes up in you when that's reflected back? I mean, just like, yeah, that nails it. Cause I'm seeing myself as that 10 year old. There was always responsibility. There was always, whether it's in the house, outside the house, there's always responsibility. Um, just to, and I would, what came up for me is what play looks like for me now. Like, what do I love to do? And it's, you know, be in front of the camera, get the workout, you know, just, you know, touch the lives, but have it be in a way that I can still feel free. Um, but yeah, this sense of relief was the first thing that came up like, oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're always so focused on what do other people need, mm -hmm. right? Like in terms of how we originally started this, it's like, okay, so how am I showing up to contribute yeah. to these leeches? Yeah. Coming up? Well, you showing up as what do people need? I'm here to fill needs is the perfect energy to attract somebody who is like, I need to be fed something. Like I need somebody else's success because I can't tap into my own, right? Ooh. That is the perfect match yeah. to somebody who gets their value, their love, their significance out of constantly sacrificing self for the good of the collective, right? So this fear of if I'm going to step into my bigness yeah. and my wholeness, yeah. like it's not a matter of like, oh, it's going to be more work. It's a matter of I'm going to be drained to the point where I'm going to be miserable in my life because all I'm going to do is turn up the volume on I need to help so that I can track more people who like you need to help me. Yeah. Right. right. So do you see how now this becomes much less of a marketing issue, which even in our short conversation together, I think you got more than enough know-how to know how to solve. Yeah. And it really becomes the fear is much less of being scared of your bigness as much as it is actually being scared of being drained. Because mm. right? there's only so many leeches Ooh. you can take on before like I got nothing left. Yeah. So and you know, the other thing that's coming up, um, Drasco is because I, I turned 50 and something happened. Like, it's like, oh no, I'm speaking my mind. I'm, you know, so I call it, I got 50 and feisty and I've been speaking up and the perception that I'm getting back is that I'm being mean because I have, I haven't had those boundaries. I've sacrificed to the point and just been like, well, I know how to tap into God. I'll just, you know, I mean, like, I'll just tap into the source and, and he'll keep, I call it Holy Spirit duct tape. He'll just keep me duct tape and keep me going. <laughs> and, um, and so I've had boundaries, you know, and really been processing out of joy. And it's fascinating that, and I don't do it mean, I'm not yelling, I'm not screaming. It's just like, no, that's not going to work for me right now. This is what I'm doing. And I set up an autoresponder on my phone. that's like, hey, I'm cocooning right now. I'm doing, just taking some me time. And it's been fascinating, especially the people that, that, that are closest to me, like I'm thinking of my daughter. Well, mama, you're, you're being mean. You've gotten, you've gotten mean. And I'm like, really? Like, I'm not a yeller, I'm not a screamer, but because, because I have a boundary. And so then I'm, I'm finding that, I'm getting that, um, yeah, people, do, it's fascinating, you know? So anyway, that's definitely, that came up for me too. 100%. I think that makes yeah. perfect sense because like we train people how to treat us. I've spent a lifetime training people that I am available at your beck and call. I will sacrifice myself to accommodate you. I've trained people to expect that you yeah. break people's expectation. Their initial gut reaction isn't, oh, wait, what am I bringing to the situation? It's you are now denying me the thing that I expected. Therefore, this relationship is now strained because you're not giving me what I'm used to you giving me. And I say that with love for the other individual yeah. because ultimately, like, you know, it is their realization and your communication with them that makes the relationship evolve. But as far as what you're contributing to it, of course, it's going to be mean. Mm -hmm. Right. If I've spent all of my life being this way and now yeah. I'm not, that's a shock. Right. Yeah. And that perfectly makes sense to me, given everything that you've said. Got it.
So anything else that comes up for you as far as that piece is concerned? Mm -mm. I'm just thinking about, you know, in, in, in right and now, Erica, not the 10 year old, what does running around doing what I love feeling free look like? And, you know, just that's, I'm excited about that. 100%. Yeah. And I mean, there's obviously a lot of areas we can go into that, like yeah. feeling the other ripple effects of like what it's like growing up. Cause I mean, that's a very explicit memory as far as like being 10 years old, but like you started from zero to 10 growing up, developing these patterns. So there's definitely going to be ripple effects of things to heal. And I think you, made it a, a good point of like how do i then in, integrate that into adult me with the adult capacities that i have with the adult realizations that i had with the adult resources that i have what does that look like to create a playground in terms of business right i think that's the most interesting question for you because the more you begin to heal the relationship with little erica who lost yeah. this part of her childhood because of responsibility how do you then replicate that into creating a playful business that allows that joy that you know innocence that playfulness mm -hmm. to then show up in the business i think that's when you get to walk the healing that you're going to do on the inner child aspect that's good i love that so it's a beautiful spot to be in Woo! all right well in that case um obviously we can't dive into all of that in this type of container uh but as far as you know today and in, in, in this kind of podcast recording container does that feel complete for you or is there still something left outstanding no i actually feel like like a loosening like like you know there were some binds that released so no that's that's what i needed today <laughs> beautiful so no that's great thank you you're very welcome. Uh, thank you for you know the bravery and uh, the vulnerability to show up in that way and connect with that vulnerable part of you. Um, so if you can then just kind of close us off and in your own words share, you know what was your experience like coming into here? What did you kind of want? And then what were the big takeaways and experiences you had going through the process? Hmm. So I didn't know until about 45 minutes before we were coming on that we were doing this. And that was exciting um, because I thought I want to identify what that, it feels like a cover, you know, what that cover is, where's that upper limit that and what, what's kicking it off. Uh, and so that was something good because we were, I was just walking someone else through that this morning. And so that's good because I'm like, you know, sacrificing so other people get what they need. So to have a moment to get what I need feels so glorious um, because truthfully, even when I've hired coaches, they always end up going, well, how do you do this? And how do you do like, I, they, you know, I'm like, can I get a coach that actually can coach me instead of me ending up coaching them? And I don't do it on purpose. It just always happens. And so it felt refreshing. Um, it felt light. Um, I love the directness because it's, I'm, you know, I'm just ready to, to, to walk this, to create this playground. Um, it also was confirmation because I've really been asking myself if I didn't put others first, because the truth is the demand isn't going to change. How I manage it, how I, how I you know, live with it is what I can control and what I can impact. And so I've been giving a lot of thought to that. And, uh, and what does that need to look like to put me first and the way I'm wired and the things that I love, or as you say, what does it look like to create the playground for my business? That is an amazing inquiry. And um, so I'm left with lightness. I'm left with clarity, uh, like that aha, because, um, you know, it's when one is gifted to see in the blind spots, especially of people that, that know how to produce, we know how to create, we know, you know, you know how to do that. That feels good because it feels like a gift returned because you were, were always giving that gift to other people. Love it. Could not have uh, <laughs> said it any better than that. So thank you. Um, perfect. And then just close us off, let everybody know where they can find you, who's the best person to find you. The floor is yours for that. Ah, best person to find me if you are one that is open to doing the work, because you do have to roll up your sleeves and do the work uh, inside yourself and, and with the skill set, but you're ready to really build something big. Uh, then by all means, reach out to me. I can be reached at uh, erica-james.com. 
and I spell my name E-R-I-C-K-A dash james.com or I'm leaning into Instagram, leaning into Instagram. I'm still pretty new, but you can find me there at, at Erica Speaks. Beautiful. Well, we'll include all that in the show notes as always. So Erica, thank you very much for coming on. And for everybody else listening, we'll see you on the next one.